Hello and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things personal finance. Even though in the current market environment it seems straight out old fashioned to be talking about investing to generate a stream of income, this is what I'm doing long term and I still or maybe especially now think that this is a worthwhile strategy. As this suggests, this is a personal video about my favorite distributing ETFs for generating a passive income stream. So please don't take this as investment advice, but just me laying down my thoughts. I've always been attracted to the idea of a dividend income stream. I will not go into the pros and cons of this strategy here, because I would assume that if you click this video, you already have the same interest. When it comes to dividend paying companies, you obviously would prefer uh, preferably look at the ones with the highest dividend yields to build a stream of income. However, it quickly becomes obvious that the ones with the highest dividend yield, let's say 6% plus, are most often either not able to sustain this dividend for long, or at least the share price will suffer, meaning it runs sideways or, as most often, will fall. Now, there are true income investors who are fine with that. They just want the most yield out of their capital, so they supposedly have more income. This is not me. I would be frustrated if I were to sacrifice total return, that is dividend yield plus price gains, in favor of distributions. Total return at least compared to the general market. Let me show you one example. Here we see charts of Shell in blue and the chart of a standard distributing MSCI World ETF in purple over the last 10 years. I don't mean to hate on Wall that Shell here, just take this as an example from many other old economy value corporations. In the last 10 years, Shell's mean dividend yield was about 5.7%. On the other hand, the ETF only yields about 1.5%. When looking at this chart, the question I'm asking now is, would it be worth it for you to have a significantly higher cash flow while also significantly losing out on total performance? Okay, you might now think Shell is an unusual example. Okay, got you. Let's take the same most basic MSCI World ETF and plot it against a dividend ETF. Here, the direct sister ETF MSCI World Quality Dividend, whose literal aim it is to represent large cap companies with above average dividend yields. The result over the past three and a half years is equally disappointing. In this time span only, the blue dividend ETF missed out on 30% total returns. That makes for an underperformance of about 7% per year. Now, to be fair, Three and a half years is not a no long enough time span for a fair comparison. The problem is that the quality dividend ETF was only issued in 2017. So let's take the other major worldwide ETF that you know from my basics of investing video, the Vanguard FTSE All World, and plot it against its dividend brother, the FTSE All World High Dividend Yield. Here the charts date back to 2013, so I think this is a fairer basis to evaluate on. However, we see the same picture here. The high dividend yield focused ETF consistently underperformed our benchmark. While the classic FTSE All World returned 11% per year, the FTSE All World High Dividend Yield ETF only returned 6.4% on average, including dividends, of course. Well, that sucks, is what I thought when I first realized this. I really want to build a passive stream of income, meaning I need at least a payout yield of over 2%. But I'm not willing to sacrifice so much total return for this. Now, of course, we always bear in mind that past returns are no indication of future returns. However, there is a good explanation why most high yielding dividend companies perform disappointing in terms of total return. A. The dividend yield is tied to the share price. If the share price decreases, the dividend yield goes up. Why does the share price normally decrease? 
because other market participants don't see a good future for the company, so they sell their stock. And B, if you owned a company and you had to decide how much of your profits to pay out in dividends, why would you pay out a big yield if you saw growth ahead if you reinvested the money into your own company? Growth normally does not happen without capital expenditures, and if there is no revenue or profit growth, the share price will not go up, and this causes the limited total return. What you should take away from this is that high dividend yields of 5% and more for individual companies or 3% and more for ETFs should be a warning sign to you. I'm not saying that companies yielding 6% can never perform, just like the average market, but at least that has often been the case. High dividend yields are no deal breaker, but just as little, they should be your only priority when researching stocks or ETFs. Okay, now what is the damn solution? In blue, you now see the Fidelity Global Quality Income ETF that goes head-to-head uh, -head with the Vanguard FTSE All World ETF in orange, which was our previous benchmark. I now have good news and I have bad news. First, the bad news. The fund size of this Fidelity Global Quality Income ETF is only 230 million euros so far, as the ETF was more or less only established in March 2017. Now, this is not too dramatic to me, except for the risk that uh, a not big enough fund size might lead to a liquidation of the ETF, so a discontinuation. Now, I'm no expert at all um, about this, but I don't see this coming. And even if, I would then just have to find a new ETF as a replacement. The cause for the only mid-size fund size might be that this ETF um, is only savings plan capable at the scalable capital broker. If you want to know more about them, check out my broker 2021 comparison. For other brokers, you will only be able to buy this ETF as a single purchase. For the sake of completeness, the TER total expense ratio sits at 0.4% per year, but in my opinion, don't, you don't really need this information when you have the ETF benchmarked as we have here, because the TER is included in the performance. Okay, so now we can turn to the good news. Let's first look, let's first talk about the elephant in the room, the dividend yield. Currently, it sits at 2.5% what is less than most high dividend yield ETFs that typically yield about 3%, but still significantly more than the 1.6% yield most FTSE All World or MSCI World ETFs have, with the key point of not missing out on performance. In fact, the ETF was even performing slightly better than the FTSE All World benchmark until COVID came along that hit most value dividend paying companies harder than growth stocks. But even during this epidemic, the quality income ETF held up pretty nicely against the FTSE All World. Okay, coming back to the video title, this is what I call my favorite passive income ETF. And income always has three dimensions. For one, the amount of income, here represented by the yield, and then also the dependability and the growth rate. And this is where this ETF truly shines. Let's first look at the dependability or reliability. The Vanguard FTSE All World High Dividend Yield ETF had to lower the June 2020 payout by 42% compared to 2019. 42%. Um, in the full year of 2020, the payouts are still down by 15% overall. This is a reminder to us all that dividend payouts are not the new interest payments. ETF payouts are generally not reliable and 2020 taught us this lesson that some of us might have forgotten in the, in the past five years. Speaking of the last five years, this ETF uh, right here was never too worried about increasing the payouts exactly year over year. It has been jumping around before a little bit, those bits were bearable, but still not optimal, op optimal if you are using an ETF as a stream of income that you depend, up depend upon. 
Okay, let's move on to our benchmark, the Vanguard FTSE All World, the one that is not focused on high dividend yields. Nearly the same picture here. The June 2020 payout was cut by a huge 40%. Overall, the total year of 2020 was down 13% in terms of payouts compa compared to 2019. You also see the jumping around in year-over-year -year payouts here, although it looks like it's slightly better here. Now let's get to the Fidelity Global Quality Income ETF that I am pitching. Again, quite a short history, but that's just how it is. I think the true ordeal was 2020 anyway. And what do we see here? No payouts were cut throughout the whole pandemic. On top of that, the ETF was able to increase its dividend payments by a whopping 15% for the year 2020 as a whole compared to 2019. 15% might not sound much now, but wait until we get to the growth rates just now. There I will relati relati relativize this figure a bit. To be 100% correct here, yes, also this ETF lowered its payout by 1 cent in August 2019. However, I believe this is an accounting issue because if you are only paying out such tiny cent amounts, then every cent makes a huge difference on a percentage basis. So all I'm saying is that when you pay out higher absolute amounts per share, then you have more room to measure off. Okay, let's talk growth rates. First, looking at the FTSE All World High Dividend Yield, again, um, you see the average payout growth rate normally lies at around 5%. For the FTSE All World, it's a little higher, maybe around 5.7%. Then if we look at the quality income, we see that we really don't have enough data yet. Of course, the 15% payout growth was nice, but obviously related to the 7.3% drop in 2019, probably due to the small absolute payout numbers I mentioned before. So definitely take the 15% growth rate with a grain of salt for now. Before I close off, I have to mention that this Fidelity Global Quality Income ETF has a sister ETF that goes by the name of US Quality Income and is solely focused on US companies. Look at the legend at the bottom so you don't mix up the colors and then you see that the US Quality Income blows the FTSE All World out of the water while also having a dividend yield of 2.3%. However, the correct benchmark for this ETF would probably be the S&P 500. Still, maybe take a look at the other quality income family ETFs. With that said, now you know what to watch out for when chasing high dividend yield ETFs and you know my favorite ETF for reliable passive income. Just remember, this is not investment advice and please do your own research. Personal responsibility is key. And having said that, please let me know if you find a better ETF for this purpose. Thank you for watching and if you want to know more about personal finance, please consider subscribing. That helps my channel to grow and keeps me going. And remember, just be lacquer. Bye bye.